Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for the opportunity to share uh, the, my career as a Naval architect in engineering in Canadian Coast Guard. What I hope to do in the next 14 minutes or so is to give you a high level uh, of my career uh, uh, with a little bit of uh, personal touch on how I get through. And then uh, the rest of this slide, there's about five more slides on that is to give you more detail on it. So the overall presentation is what I've put on the screen right now. And then I have another deck that talks about uh, the frontline work of the Canadian Coast Guard. And that probably, hopefully, give you a bit better uh, understanding of what are the work that Canadian Coast Guard uh, to do with the Canadian. So uh, when I first look at uh, the, the, the forum, is Hong Chu Zhang Yun. So I really want to look at is how, uh, with my background, how I develop my career. And hopefully that will share some uh, uh, insight or some stimulation for your questions and help you to choose uh, the, the, the career path that you want to look at. So currently, uh, I am uh, the director of engineering support in vessel procurement in Canadian Coast Guard. Uh, in Ottawa, but we have uh, projects uh, in the East Coast and also in the West Coast in Vancouver Shipyard and also in Irving Shipyard in the East Coast and also uh, in the Quebec City, in the Quebec uh, province as well. I study in Hong Kong at the matriculation that is equivalent to grade 12 and graduate in UK at University of Newcastle upon time uh, with a Bachelor of Science on the degree on Naval Architecture and Shipbuilding. I got a charter engineer from UK and a professional engineer in Canada. After graduation, I went back to Hong Kong and worked in repair yard and with ship owners. Uh, for people who are at, at, for the parents, they may have heard of Bao Yuk Dong, the worldwide shipping, and also Dong Ho Wan, the island navigation ship, shipping company. That I worked with both of them. And because of that, I went to Japan for a field supervision on the construction of new vessels for them that give me a really good experience in the career advancement. Then afterwards, I work with the Hong Kong government as a ship surveyor. So similar to what I'm doing in the uh, Canadian Coast Guard. And then after nine years in Hong Kong, uh, I emigrated from Hong Kong to Canada in 1989. Uh, my family landed in Vancouver and then we got an offer in Halifax, Nova Scotia, in a design firm. And now, and then afterwards, I work in the shipyard. And currently is the Irving Shipyard in Halifax. And after I become a Canadian citizen, I joined the government and worked in the Canadian Coast Guard in 1993. So, uh, and I'm, I've worked for 28 years now. So my current job as the director, I'm at the ex executive uh, ranking. And uh, so I do a lot more strategic and policy work rather than the day-to-day -day engineering work. But I'm also uh, keep in sort of close connection with my managers and the engineers because I have a strong background and I'm interested and in hopefully helping uh, the, the people in my team as well. And uh, uh, I lead the team of engineers and in the engineer is multidiscipline. So we have naval architects, we have uh, mechanical and marine engineers, we have electrical and electronic engineers, as well as technologists. And what do we do? We do design ships from concept design, from an operation technical requirement. We, drew, we make drawings, we do calculations, and so as to look at the initial design to make sure that the requirements are validated. And during the construction, we also send people to do inspection stage by stage inspection of the constructions and also test and trial when the ship is uh, more or less completed. And then, uh, so the job is, uh, my is management and engineering. So the work experience and reflection, um, I, ha I have done both engineering and design work, as I mentioned earlier on, and somehow, uh, I'm fortunate in the past 42 years, a good portion is on the engineering side. So I, I do have a strong uh, technical background and that helps me. And no matter what character you are, if you are more like to work uh, sort of on your own type, 
the engineering world can do that because they have the technical analysis part that can go very deep. But on the other hand, the design, the design work, you need to work as a team. So there's a combination of teamwork as well as individual work and depends on the strength and weakness of the individual. Some will do more teamwork, some will do more individual works. So it really suits uh, different characters as well too. And I found that it is rewarding uh, in both cases because dealing with people, you get a lot more uh, different uh, uh, insight and also some challenge in working with people too. And those are things that will build up our career as we progress. Uh, how to get into the marine At high school, uh, from grade nine to grade 12, uh, I found that if there's time, what do I want to do? And I found that uh, what kind of homework that I don't mind to do. It turns out to be math and physics. And somehow I also hang out with the people who are who I also like to do math and uh, physics as well. So we got good marks. And early on, uh, the principal speaker, Chris, mentioned about the passion. And in fact, I look at it, it's, it's very much similar to his. It's, I look at the attitude and your, and your capability goes hand in hand. If you think of something that you like to do, you want to do, the difficulties becomes a challenge. It's no longer an obstacle. You want to find ways to resolve it. And that become interesting and raise up your energy. But on the other hand, if you are not interested on certain things, you will get defeated fairly quick. So your attitude, your passion is important and your passion and attitude drive your per perseverance to continue your career once you choose, because there's always good, bad and ugly in each of the profession. So you need to be able to uh, work through the dark days and also uh, celebrate the good days and learn from both. In fact, I found that dark, dark days learns more in that sense. Uh, so afterwards, then uh, when I when I get through all this, then uh, what I need to do is I need to get good marks. I apply to the university. I get into the university in UK and I got an unconditional offer. So that's how I end up with it. And in the course, it was a challenge. There were 42 students and only 28 graduates at that time. So whatever field that you choose, you need to persevere. N not any subject. If you want to do well, you, you need to do well to be at the top, uh, top uh, tier uh, of engineer in that area. You need to do that in order to survive and also prosperous of your career. What is the minimum uh, requirement? For the job that I'm doing on engineering, you need a bachelor degree, you need a professional engineer in Canada. And for the people working on the ship, you need vocational certificates. That could be run by Canadian Coast Guard College in Sydney, Nova Scotia. In Ontario, there's Georgian College in Owen Sound or Midland. In BC, there's BC Institute of Technology. In Newfoundland, there's the Marine Institute. So those are, uh, they don't need a degree you only need high school qualification to enter. So what is the prospect of this field as a career? Uh, I think it's reasonably good. The reason why is the government need to replace the existing Coast Guard fleet as well as the Navy. And so for the Coast Guard, we got uh, now is almost 40, it's around 44 billion on new and existing vessel to replace them. So for the next 10 years, there are many design and construction work to do. The construction program goes beyond to 2040. So next 20 years, the replacement, after 20 years, uh, the replacement will start. So I think it's a bright future, especially now we are concentrating a lot of in Canada, build in Canada. So we think uh, the field will be going. It's not a big industry, but it's a strong industry. Uh, the career span on engineering design usually is shorter. So if you choose engineering, there are always two perspectives. One is on the design side. Usually that is more short-lived because once you, you do the design, it will be construction. So, but the second stream is when you understand a good work, good, good understanding on the design, you work on the construction. Construction usually lasts longer. Project management, production engineering. So those are the few that you can look at and have done both. Both are very rewarding because in the production, you actually see the ship take shape every day when you do the inspections. So 
I would think the industry is still pretty strong. And in, when you choose the career in Coast Guard, which is a federal government, it will be right through your, your retirement. So 35 years and plus. And next year, Coast Guard is going to celebrate 60 years anniversary. And I would imagine it will be another six days and beyond. So the career stability is, is pretty good on that. Now, here is more the detail, the engineering career at Coast Guard, the shore-based positions that operate uh, uh, in, in, in Lansai, in Ottawa, in, in, in different Coast Guard space. For the project engineer, they are mechanical, electrical, or naval architect. They do concept design, uh, technical solution, investigation, life cycle. That means for the whole life of the vessel, how do you maintain that? Now, on the other hand, on the seagoing position that is operating at sea, and they are marine engineers and they officers. They operate ships. They do on, on, on the ship maintenance. So they also require a good operational sense and they train you in the Coast Guard College. You don't need a degree, but you need professional certification. And I mentioned earlier on the, the uh, education and the occupational uh, certification. Project engineer degree, marine engineer is, uh, we can get it from the Coast Guard College. And the link, I'm going to send the back to the organizer. So there will be a link and then you can check with the Coast Guard College. Now the salary, which is a practical aspect, that is talking about now uh, for project engineer. Eng2 is right from graduate from university. Your starting salary is this, uh, 70,000 or, or uh, 70,000 plus. And then in a year and a half or so, depends on the performance, people will be promoted to entry and that will be your starting salary. And then uh, a lot of the people will pro promote to entry four. It takes around 10 years to, to get to the top level. And some of them will end up an, as manager. Manager will be that level. For people working on the ship, starting after graduate from the program is almost 70,000. And a lot of them uh, in the, end up in the range of uh, uh, over 100,000. So that is more or less the salary on that. The job opportunity for students, those who are not in a co-op student program in the university, in the summertime in the federal, they call it the Federal Student Work Employment Program. And then you can apply, you can apply for that. And then uh, usually they will give people an opportunity in the summertime between May to August, to have some federal experience and Coast Guard do accept that there's an inshore uh, a, a vessel a program and that, that you can apply to. And then the benefit working with the public service is a different dental plan and pension and job security. And one great aspect I found is the career development and education opportunity. Uh, we are really looking at a lot of talent management and professional development. We put a lot of emphasis for the next generation on that. So it will be a good way if you want to enrich your, you want to learn and the government usually have a more liberal and, and looking at the next generation, put more funding for training as well. So I'm going to stop on this one and share with you on another deck that is on the front line well of the Coast Guard that will give you a bit more uh, perspective. What do we do on, on the Canadian water? Can you see this one? Yes, we can. Okay. So... Uh, this is on the Canadian Coast Guard, serve on the front line of the Canadian waterway. Uh, Why we exist, we help to grow the economy because uh, we, in the winter time, we make sure that on the East Coast, the, 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 that we do ice breaking services. We do ice management and light, uh, in sometimes in the winter time, we do uh, make sure that there's no flooding caused for the uh, cottages or, or residential area or buildings along the, the waterway uh, to, to flood and that kind of things. We also keep the, the water safe, safe in the sense that if, if there is any, uh, the traffic, the age to navigation, and we also do a lot of protection for the environment that when there is pollution, then we will be the first responder to be on site to contain the damage and recover them. Now, these are the type of work that we do. 
and maritime search and rescue. Uh, you see that sometimes in the news, uh, there are people lost. And if it is in the uh, open water, a lot of the time, Coast Guard will be on the scene. If it is more um, in the near the coast, a lot of the local police like OPP, the Marine Police will be there to do the search and rescue. And if there's any uh, disaster uh, that we need to recover people, then the Coast Guard will be there. And like the, if there's a plane crash, uh, plane crash before, and this is the uh, air cushion vehicle. That means they operate on land as well as on sea and on shallow water. And this is the fast, uh, this is the, what we call the rigid, how inflatable boat, they are very fast. And this is also search and rescue boat. The way we design it, if the wave is very high, say 20 feet high, seven meter, and if the whole vessel is totally roll over, it will self writing by itself. So the design is very uh, challenging for us, but those are the, the work that the engineer do. And uh, so the design work is very uh, interesting. Ace to navigation, as I mentioned early on, on the land side, you have the white line to divide the traffic from one end, from one direction to the opposite. But in the uh, in the seaway, you sometimes see some buoy with a light. Some of them are red, some of them are green. In the winter time, we need to bring them up because the ice may crash, or sometimes we need to do maintenance. And these are the type of uh, work that we do. These are the vessels. This is the air cushion vehicles that. We bought from the UK, and to some extent, we also involved in some of the operational requirement validation things like that. This is another vessel that we are supporting uh, the the lighthouse that type of work. Ice breaking. We are in the Arctic country, so in the winter time, to maintain the merchandise going to Montreal, going to Saint Lawrence River, we need to break ice, and also. Uh, we also need to do the northern supply in the summertime, but summertime in the north, there's still ice. So we are breaking ice at both in the east coast and up north in Arctic for the transport of the goods. And you see here on the bottom left-hand corner, uh, it, they put on a Christmas uh, uh, Santa Claus clothing. Actually, they are there. Uh, it's one of the, our uh, 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 high a heavy icebreaker, Terry Fox. We do a lot of icebreaking and also science work, science uh, uh, research work up north. This is another ice, uh, uh, ice uh, air cushion vehicle doing what we call icebreaking to do the ice uh, management. Uh, environmental uh, protection. Here on the left hand side, you see there's a boom to contain the, the oil uh, pollution and recover them. This is the plane to do the surveillance. These are some of the contractors to recover the oil. So in terms of our design, we need to look at all this. And in terms of the environmental protection, we also need to make sure that uh, our emission is also reasonably low and meet all the requirements. And uh, Canada is also supporting the net zero by 25th. So that is always a challenge for us to design the engine so that the exhaust is being uh, reduced as much as we can. Uh, this one is vessel of concern. Sometimes from time to time, you may see that some of the vessel, they were abandoned and they become a navigation hazard or they may become pollution hazard. And then if the owner didn't do that, they abandoned them, then the Coast Guard has to do that. And that is some of the work that our operation have to look at that, make sure we get all the oil out, all the environmental contaminant out, make sure it is safe. And before we take them to shore, and to do ice, to do shipbreaking and sell it for ice breaking, that type of work. And marine security, we work closely with the uh, Royal Canadian Navy in terms of security. We also work with US Coast Guard with the allies as well. So those are the type of work that we do. So we have very strong communication with each other. Uh, support on the uh, uh, that is on the scientific research. Uh, we do support Department of Fishery Ocean. That is what we belong to. The scientists to look at the quality of the water, the status of the fish stock, the health of the habitat, and like the, uh, the, the south whale, uh, killer whale, that type of situation. So we do a lot of work for the scientists so that we, we have designed vessels that are quiet so that we can 
assess uh, the site, the, the environment in, uh, in Canada, in the Canadian water. Uh, this one is on the conservation and protection. You may have heard in the lobster season, then we have to control how much lobster the fishermen can get. And those, we have the conservation and protection officer to make sure that we go on board on those vessels to ensure that they meet the quota requirement. And marine communication and traffic services. Uh, we just passed the, uh, the 20th anniversary of the uh, September, uh, uh, September 11th. And you heard about the air traffic controller in Gander. In the marine field, we have similar people called marine uh, communication and traffic controller. And they, what they do now on this top corner is looking at the traffic to make sure that the seaway is safe and not congested in that sense. So these are the work that the Coast Guard do. The ship that the engineer technology design is to support them. Well, the time is 4.25, so it's time uh, that I'm open to questions if you have any. Thank you. Thank you very much. So everyone, you are free to put your any questions in the chat. Or if you have a question like, I really want to say that, um, say that out by my mouth, then you can please raise your hand and then I will let you speak in any way. So please feel free to ask any question from the chat. Oh, we have one question. I think it's from uh, Grace Louis. Grace, yeah. Uh, if you want to be an engineer, do you need to get good marks in both English and math? Uh, I would think so. Uh, math is where, because a lot for engineers, uh, we are very strong on the calculation. If you make wrong calculation, uh, the vessel could have a safety issue. Safety issue in terms of safe or stability, whether the vessel can flow or not flow. If your math is not good, then it is uh, dangerous. And earlier I mentioned that it's one of the search and rescue, a small boat. It's not big, it's only 45 feet. And the vessel can roll over 360 degrees and get upright. So your calculation has to be to be good. When we do ice breaking, uh, your structural analysis has to be good as well too, because uh, you may have a bigger sort of what we call design margin, but if uh, they are up north and if uh, the ice is uh, is breaking the ship, and very often in the Canadian water the ice. Uh, damage is severe. So, so your, your, your math needs to be good, but you can train that because after some time, uh, once you work enough, then you will, you will know. English is important, both communication in writing and also in oral, because uh, you may have very good idea, but if you can't communicate in such a way that your client or your subordinate or your boss don't understand, then there will be an, uh, a challenge. But I would be more inclined to look at it as, my first language is not English. And I think we can learn from that. And I think a lot of you, your first language or mother tongue is English. So there are ways to learn from it. And I think uh, it can be done. So you just need to find ways to, to improve that. Uh, yeah, I'm more a math person and not an English person. Yeah. The way we do for engineers, uh, we know that we are, we are not very good at writing. So the way we do in our team and in a lot of the uh, engineering firms, is they have a technical writer. They help you to, 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 to write uh, reports or you, you get a draft and then you can refine it. Uh, we will get someone to refine it. So there's one way to get around on the language but your math, your physics, your engineering, you still need to be strong because that one, not many people can help you on that. But you, you can learn from peers, you can learn from junior and, and senior because we, what we call a lot of, of that is reverse mentoring. People around you, each one is a source that you can learn and you can share your experience. So we can do that. So English, you may have a little bit of get around, but you still need you, you just still need to improve as much as you can. Is it hard to get your PNG from your charter engineer with the formal uh, engineering education in Canada? Now, I am fortunate when I start with Nova Scotia, I got nine years of experience and I am a charter engineer. Charter engineer in my time, you need to, uh, to do a 
four year in a training program and two year in a responsible post. And if you can combine the, the, the time, because I got summer work in the research field. So I got it in four and a half years. So what I did is once I got the charter engineer, when I came to Canada, I need to work in the, in the relevant field, which I was one year. Then I applied to the Nova Scotia. At that time I was in Halifax. I applied for the APES, Association of Professional Engineers in Nova Scotia. I only need to do uh, two paper, which are multiple choice. One is the code of ethics. The other one is the law. And so once I get that, then they will just let me get through. So if you have a charter engineer, my understanding from APES at that time is one year experience uh, with reference, then you can get through. And then do you need to travel a lot for your job? Which city do you base? Most of my family is in GTA. And I wonder if the job will keep me away from home. Now, uh, if it is in the government, then I notice for Coast Guard, we don't have a base in Toronto. Uh, we have a base in Sarnia, that is the nearest. And then we have base in uh, Brockville, uh, which is not, um, it depends. I live in Ottawa. And the way I choose is Ottawa, there's a lot of federal jobs, so I don't have to move. In Toronto, Transport Canada, they do have office there though. And they also require uh, people like my type of skill and engineers, marine and electrical. Uh, so uh, in G G GTA, I think on the government side, it will be better uh, there for you to move. And in fact, uh, in my team, we have just recruited, uh, we have recruited two people from, from uh, Toronto, they moved to Ottawa. So uh, it, it, it will be good is you, you move to the place where most of the clients are. And if it is federal government, it will be in Ottawa. If it is others, then it will be near coast like St. Catherine or Vancouver or Halifax. So that is, uh, so, so you, you may need to consider because GTA may not have that. But now with the COVID, there are a lot of situations, people working remotely. So that is also a possibility though, yeah. Uh, then the next one is, everyone please do me. Okay. Uh, I just me. want to, oh, okay, yeah. So. So do we have any more questions you want to ask? It's a great opportunity for us to ask questions. Yeah. So everyone just ask whatever you want to ask and it yes, will be great. Yes. Yeah, because because it as not not normally we can get such a good person or fit person for for this talk. So good chance for everyone. Or if you need it, you can raise your hand and I can unmute you, or you can you can unmute your mic and you can ask questions as well. So you feel free to do so. We just wait for a few more seconds. If there's no people, then probably it's the end of today. See, anyone want to ask some questions? Mm, we got questions, very nice. Um, do you think in Canada, a naval engineer has the same exposure as in Hong Kong or other parts of the world? Now, uh, for naval engineer, I have worked in Hong Kong and also worked in Japan as well. Uh, in Hong Kong, we work, uh, I work with two major ship owners. So we do a lot of commercial vessels like tankers, container vessels, uh, product oil tankers. But in Canada, we do more what we call a special type of vessel. I do, uh, we just deliver free vessels from Vancouver called offshore fisher science vessel. In terms of the engineering, it is more sophisticated than when I was in Hong Kong or in Japan. And we are in the process of doing uh, icebreaker design. We have done some what we call polar icebreaker. That means uh, the, 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 the ship that we have designed can go through to the polar throughout the year, even though in winter. So in terms of the engineering, the analysis, I found in Canada, uh, we do a lot more detailed analysis. In Hong Kong, we will rely on the expertise from overseas at my time, it was in Europe, in America, in Japan. Now it's more in Korea. So in Canada, once you get into either a design firm or in the government, 
uh, in Coast Guard type of that do engineering design work, you will have a better exposure. And also, if I work in Transport Canada, that is like an administration, we can go to London to an, uh, an organization for all the international marine world that we represent Canada. So in terms of the exposure, we will, because Canada is one of the G7 country and we have one of the allies. So we have uh, a lot more exposure in terms of meeting with people at uh, country in, in international maritime organization. And also we are the ex-circumpolar Arctic country. So we also have an uh, opportunity to meet with that. We also have what we call uh, North Atlantic uh, Coast Guard Forum. That means other country with Coast Guard and same for the Pacific. So uh, working in Canada, if you work in the government, you have a lot more exposure with other government and also with other international organizations. So in terms of the engineering, the level of engineering, in Hong Kong, usually we will buy the engineering. But in Canada, we are doing more and build up uh, from a home, from a home, uh, from a, from a home a domestic base. So we work within ourselves and we are stronger in asking the end because our vessel, a lot of them are not Come, are not off the shelf type. That means it's not like you buy a car, like you buy whatever brand it is. It is on the shelf. You have so many options. For us, is we have a certain operational requirement we need to design, and the operational requirements sometimes compete with each other. So we have to do a lot of engineering to optimize that. When you do optimization of engineering, you are doing a, a lot of engine, and we have a lot of software to do to do structural analysis, stability analysis, drawing like AutoCAD. So I find that uh, the exposure is deeper, but it's more narrow in the sense it's a type of vessels and they, they are more scientifically more complicated uh, in terms of the type of vessel, yeah. So I hope I answered the question. Yeah, can, can, I, can I jump in? Like, yes, yes, Eric. Yeah, I, First of all, I'd like to thank uh, Mr. Powell for, uh, for this very detailed explanation on the, the career. And I just want to comment on some of the, uh, 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 some of the question. Like I, I think today, like our youth, like should not be just limited themselves geogra geographically, right? <laughs> like, because I know many kids, they, they are working in California or they are like, like even in Victoria for joining the Navy, so they have to go to Victoria to to uh, like to go on the ship, right? Like, so I, I I think now like the kids will go wherever the job is, so it shouldn't be limited to just one city or one country. I think, right? I I, I think that's great that like it seems our naval engineering is more on the design on the more scientific challenges. Instead of in Hong Kong, I think, as you said, like we you just buy it right, just off the shelf. So we, we, we will take on those challenges. I think it will be a very interesting career like for, for our youth today, right? Yeah, I, I, if I may supplement a little bit. And uh, my experience on Halifax, that uh, we land in Vancouver, we say we have to move back to Far East, but this time Far East of Canada is to Halifax. But we found that the experience that I got the four year in Halifax uh, give me a lot of exposure, not just on your engineering, it's the way we look at the Canadian culture. And when we want to work in the mainstream, you need to know the main culture in that sense. So it's not just the, the profession, but uh, once we inter, uh, sort of integrate and work with people, you learn, the pe you learn, you learn with, uh, with the culture and the people a lot, and that uh, helps a lot in that sense though. And I can still use my experience in that four year, that is 20 years ago today. And uh, it really helps a lot. So uh, when you start your profession, don't limit yourself geographically. At one time when I was uh, in the universe, I think I would go where I want. That's why uh, at the six months before I, I finished the, the, the last year in the university, I applied, I think over 30 shipyards in Japan. I don't know the language, but I want to try because you go where the technology is there and you learn. And then, and then once you get the technology, you know the people, 
the career more or less start to open door for you. If a door is closed, another window will open for you though. So, so I think the best is think of how you can improve your career. And if you are a single, then it's more mobile. Even though you are married, also think of that though. Because uh, your strong foundation, the first 10 years is often a good indicator how you're going to build up the rest of the career. Once you're strong over the first 10 years, you're pretty good uh, in continuing uh, your profession, even though the profession may reduce, but you tend to be a survivor in a smaller industry if you get the good experience and good reputation and people skill. I think it's very good advice on like you have to build your career in the first 10 years, like you, you learn the technology, like you build up your reputation and all this, right? I, I think we yeah, have another yeah. question. Um, beside engineering, yes. error, what kind of job available? Beside engineering, what kind of job available in ships that is suitable for Hong Kong youth? Um, I, I share the two areas. One is uh, in the Coast Guard College, still technical, but you can navigate a ship like a, a captain of a ship, uh, like um, the marine engineer is engineer, but uh, that is that type. Another type is what we call marine communication and traffic controller. That is uh, communication, uh, good on radio, good on uh, telecommunication, that type of work. Uh, that is more, I think they are distributed across the country. And uh, so that can, that can be something that uh maybe something that may help if you like video game then that is the type of work you will see the, the screen quite a lot though because nowadays a lot of the control system on ships they are using the ipad they are using the control system they are very much like the uh, using the video game that type of thing and electronic and electrical is getting more and more sophisticated yeah uh, what kind of engineer is uh, the ship captain, the navigator, ship officer. That means they drive the ship and then they, they still need to have engineering knowledge, but they are not the hands-on people to do the repair of the engines, uh, but they need to navigate the ship. Like if you go for a, a boat tour, there is someone who, who drives the ship and that is the type of job, but they are bigger vessels. Yeah. I think we have... There's a lot, last question for today. I have good hearing power. What is your advice? Uh, good hearing power. What is your advice? Um, I don't quite understand. Uh, I have good hearing power. That means you are a good listener, right? You are a good, active, and deep listener. Is that what I understand, Chum? Oh, uh, if you are a good listener, you are in a in in a advantage. You are in a good advantage, advantageous position in many ways because uh, in the workplace, it's not easy to get good listeners and people really understand and analyze people's uh, advice. And I I think that you are good in many ways. Uh, engineering is one of those because uh, sound oh sound and not uh, oh okay then that that area is getting more and more important now. Uh, the reason why is in Canada, we are having, uh, especially Transport Canada, we are looking at sound pollution now, what we call underwater radiated noise pollution. And you might hear just a few days ago, there's another killer whale that was surfaced in, I think, in the East Coast. And uh, the whales, the marine mammals are sensitive to sound. And there's initiative from Canada because the last few two years or so uh, with the uh, killer whale. So uh, we do a lot of noise analysis, just try to reduce the sound generated by the propeller of the ship, by the engine. Sound analysis is a very specialized uh, area. We usually employ specialists to do that. But bearing in mind, that field is, uh, is still need quite a bit of engineering and they are very specialized. So you need to make sure that when, before you enter that, you, st you, you still want to have a good background and then you get to that and then you will become more a specialist. If you are good in, in, uh, in analysis, 
then it will be good because there's one company in the stage that we use a lot and then they do a lot of uh, at the concept design of a ship they will look at it looking at the vibration and the sound trying to reduce and they are very costly too yeah so sound analysis is an even more specialized area so if you want to choose that then once uh, you need to do a bit more homework to see what are the possibility uh, in terms of your career yeah okay great so so thank you for everything today. <laughs> we have okay. uh, probably we have some professionals ideas and stuff we learned about, and hopefully everyone in here learned something about it, or you can know more about it. Um, so I think this is the day. So thanks for everyone, and thanks for Nico for joining us.